Welcome back to the channel. So today we're going to do a Logic Pro tutorial. We're going to show you everything from configuring your preferences all the way up to actually recording. So without further ado, let's just jump on right into the video. All right, let's get right into it. So when I open up a session and when you open up a session in Logic, it pretty much defaults to this screen. Well, if you had a mix when open, it would also shit show but the session that i open up defaulted to just this edit window this is the mix window i'm going to come back to that in one second so first and foremost i just wanted to direct your attention to the taskbar now i have to say this if you're a new person uh getting into recording this is some this is a place that you typically don't want to mess with too much with the exception of ensuring that your audio device is set up properly so right now I have a sound capture device as well as a blue microphone. But if I were using my SSL interface, I would just be selecting that. But again, if you're a beginner, you don't necessarily want to mess with anything else. That's what that section is for. If you've used GarageBand, you'll notice that it's very similar. But GarageBand, I'm sorry, but Logic Pro is pretty much like the big brother. And just rest assured all this may seem confusing but it's just like being able to drive a vehicle if you could drive a honda you sure enough have the ability to drive a porsche uh however you know things are just configured maybe a little different but they all do the same thing so again if you go back to uh everything basically in this taskbar so almost everything up here there's shortcuts for all over the screen you know uh the thing that you're probably going to go here for the most is basically when it's time to bounce down uh, a track, you basically go to File, Bounce, Project Access, or Project or Section, and it will actually bounce down that uh, session for you. There's also a Share button where you could just airdrop it, or you could even send it to SoundCloud. I think I did it before, or <laughs> you can send it to GarageBand. Uh, but again. Here's other things, navigation options. If you wanted to have uh, more buttons on your transport bar, that's what you could set it up there. If you wanted to set up your metronome, you could do that there. And there's just a whole bunch of other tools that you could play with in your own time just to get logic and figure the way you like. But again, a lot of those tools that are up here can be found around the screen right here. So here's the transport. Here's the loop button. So if you were to select that, it basically would loop a section. So watch when I hit that. Or as you've probably already noticed, you could just click up here and just select a section that you wanted to loop. Pretty pretty simple. Transport again. This is uh it shows a uh, the playhead position. Now you know again Pro Tools, you have the ability to combine all this. If I'm not mistaken, you could do the same thing in Logic, see right here, but I don't have it set up that way. But again, this is where you see the bars, the beats, the tempo, and the, the, the key of the song that you may have set up. And so you could customize the bar right by clicking this button. Metronome controls uh, here is basically where you could access the loops that are stocked with, with, with Logic. So you would actually just go here, select it, you could actually select it by genre or by instrument or even the scriptors. The ones that you see faded in the background, these are the ones that I didn't download. There's several gigs worth, and I typically don't use Logic Loops or Apple Loops, so that's why I didn't download them. But again, you have the ability to go ahead and download them and drag them into your session. If you hit that button again, it disappears. This button basically shows you all the files that's associated with not just your project, but everything that's on your desktop. So that's like uh, the browser, basically. Uh, also, come into, so come into uh, the transport window. Again, this is the edit. So if you wanted to make your tracks a little bigger, you could use this tool right here, or you could use that as well. Speaking of tools, you select this, this item here. You can select from your pointer tool to your pencil, eraser, scissors, 
glue solo tool, mute tool, zoom tool, fade tool, flex tool, marquee tool, automation curve tool. There's a lot of tools right here in this section. So for instance, if you wanted to, and again, just so you can see, so say for instance, you wanted to cut the sound from here. If there was like some background noise, you would just go here, get the scissors, click that, click that. And technically you didn't have to do that part, that part, but just for purpose of just showing you, you could just actually do that. And there's other ways you could also cut audio, but that's just, that's one way you could actually do it. All these colors are pretty bland compared to when you look at something like Pro Tools, right? But you actually have the ability to change the color as well. You could actually rename the regions, tracks. There's a lot of things that you have the ability to do. So you could, yeah, you could even rename, rename them, change the colors, uh, whatnot. So if I wanted to rename the region, say I could just select that, call it whatever, and it would actually rename that particular region. All the tracks that you see by default that are green, these are the equivalent of the uh, the note editor, like an FL Studio. This is actually where all oh, the piano roll. This is where you could actually go in and change notes around. Again, if you're familiar with FL Studio, this is same same thing. Uh, you go in there and create notes or whatnot, and that's how you do that. If you hit X, you would actually come out of that hit it again, you would totally be out of it. But if you wanted to mess with the mix in view, you would hit X again, and it would bring you to this view. And this is where you have your channels, and the channels is like where the tracks set or live. The reason why this is going up and down is because I have another microphone set up. But if I wanted to record, it's as, as easy as hitting the R button. I allows you to hear what you're recording. S is solo, M is mute. These, uh, this section here is the bus section. So let me go back here. So this is the bus section. So if you're not familiar with busing, there are tons of videos online, but I'll also be creating videos that go into detail about uh, busing. But right now I have everything set to the output, the stereo output. And that's basically why everything is like ST out, which is the, my SSL under normal circumstances. This section in here is the EQ. This would be the stock EQ. Logic has really good stock plugins. And there's again, more videos on that online. And I also have a video on that I'll be doing, but if you have other plugins that you purchased, this is where you would find them. And you just go here and you just select them by the track. And you could also, again, bus your vocal effects, compressors, and all those other things to, you could bust those to another track and then send the other vocals to that. But this is what this, this is how you actually access that. And again, there's all these other settings that you could use, but again, Typically, most people won't be doing too much of that. Here it is, you can see everything that's being shown on the, the mix view. So if you deselect these things, you'd notice that some of the things disappear from, some of the things disappears from the mix window. So I'm just gonna select everything back. Select that button, it makes it a little wider, makes it, Cinema. You could also have them single. You could actually show all. So again, all these uh, things that's a matter of your preference. And again, if you were to record, you would essentially just arm your track. So just say for instance, I wanted to create a new track. So there's another way you could do it, but I'll just do this so you can see. If you wanted to create like a gang of tracks, you could just hit like, you know, 10 tracks. If you wanted them to be audio, you just select as audio. If you want to solve for instruments, you would hit that. You hit create. Once you hit create, you would be able to select whatever track you want to record on. 
you would hit R. Remember, you hit I so you could have yourself in headphones. And you would essentially record to whatever instrument you have. Once you're done doing that, and you edit it, slash mix the track, then you would go back to file and bounce down the final track. Okay, so there you have it. Hope you like this video. Give it a like, thumbs up. Make sure you follow. See you guys in the next episode.